The recent and second provocation of Russia by Georgia has sparked an international incident which is threatening to spiral out of control. Russia has invaded Georgian territory, claiming the need to protect their citizens from Georgian aggression. Like in the previous conflict, Russia has stopped at the South Ossetian border, either willingly or due to the blocking action of Georgian forces just south of the town of Skimbali. Diplomatic attempts at resolving the situation have either failed or stalled, and Georgia has called on NATO for assistance. Should Russia decide to move its forces further in Georgia, the Georgian army would not be able to put up long resistance, as the Russian forces are better equipped and more numerous. In addition, a vital NATO oil pipeline is routed through Georgia, and as such, NATO has decided to render assistance. Initially, a number of US Air Force assets are deployed around Sibilisi. In order to reduce the situational awareness of the Russian forces and to discourage them from staying on Georgian territory, the first NATO mission will be to destroy the Russian early warning radar stationed approximately three nautical miles to the west of Skimbali. Our mission will be to defend the dead and seed flights attacking the radar. We will complete a strike against the early warning radar and maintain air superiority over the target until the dead flight completes its mission and leaves the area.
Okay, hello guys and welcome back to Chris Flies Planes. Chris here of course and today we are back in DCS doing a playthrough of the Flaming Cliffs 3 DLC F-15C Strike Eagle campaign. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that little intro we did there guys. I want to try a little bit of something different today with the flashy credits and uh, pants. Let me know what you think in the comments about that. I would really appreciate some feedback and if you like it of course guys hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. So we're doing a playthrough of the first real mission in the Flaming Cliffs 3 DLC, i.e. after the tutorial mission where you do the flyover and we then jump in. So we are currently flying combat air patrol for a dead and seed flight. So um, dead flight being the destruction of enemy air defences and seed flight being the suppression of enemy air defences, both working together to take out an early warning radar uh, owned by the Russians on the Georgia-Russian border. So, these missions are really difficult, the learning curve is really steep and they're very easy to fail, so I kind of want to talk through how to do the mission as we fly it here. So currently we are just up in the air and flying uh, on the nav points, as you can see in the bottom right corner of our head-up display. We are flying towards nav point 1. We do have our radar on and you can see a number of targets, there's a tanker and F-15 group in front of us, which I believe are the seed flight. Um, and we're going to keep an eye on that today and just make sure that nothing insidious occurs. We are flying with a wingman today. Unfortunately, it is computer operated. It is not Happy Feet. And I shall call him Iceman for the purpose of today's mission and commentary. So I hope you guys are all doing very well. I know there's been a big delay in this video. Uh, there's a few reasons about that. Number one, it's the end of the year and I'm totally exhausted. Work is very stressful at the minute. And it's very hard to kind of encourage myself to record. And also... Um, I want to spend a lot of time on this video with editing and music and credits and everything and it also just take a while to get the mission actually recorded, it's quite difficult to do these missions. So yeah, I'm hoping that the wait was worthwhile and I can start putting out some better quality videos and the more I do it, the quicker I'm going to get at it. Okay, you can see on our threat warning radar there on our right hand side, we have a MiG-29 appeared at around hour 2 o'clock off our right wing. I don't think we're going to do anything about this immediately. We're going to keep on towards our nav 1 waypoint. He's quite far out and he's not showing up on our actual radar. So I'm not massively concerned right now. But definitely worth keeping an eye on him. We've got Iceman calling out a number of targets. Um, we don't need to worry. Any of these surface to air missiles. So as we kind of fly up towards the mission area, you'll see a number of surface to air missile sites potentially off our left and right wing. Uh, we need to be wary of those. We're going to try and stay up around 22,000 feet just to make sure we're out of range of those. And it also gives us a little bit of height when dogfighting if we're going to be doing so. So basically our plan is going to be to fly in towards uh, nav point 2 and we're going to be patrolling basically between nav point 2 and nav point 3. Uh, at some point as we get towards nav point 3 we'll get the opportunity to radio in the uh, ground attack F-15s, uh, F-16s maybe. Um, so we'll radio them in as and when we have the opportunity and basically defend them whilst they perform their attack. And if all goes well, we will be successful. Okay, so we're now turning over towards waypoint 2. Just keeping an eye on that radar. That MiG-29 is still off our wing. Still not showing up on the radar, though. Um, let's see. So knowing where we are, knowing where waypoint 3 is going to be, um, at some point we're going to have to go for this guy anyway. So I'm thinking about just turning and going for him now. I mean, the ability to look around in Oculus is just consistently blows my mind. Um, I'm really happy I found a way to record this in full screen instead of in that weird, like, uh, profile mode video. I think it really helps the videos and it also because I'm playing it back rather than recording it as I play it allows me to boost the graphics right up and make the most of my new 1070. Uh, thank you to my anonymous benefactor for that by the way. You know who you are. And yeah it just makes this game unbelievable. I, I couldn't really think about doing this without it at this point. Okay, so you can see on our radar now, we have the MiG-29 showing up, and we're going to turn into him and, and go on the attack. He's still quite far out. 
But, I mean, at the very least, we can get him locked up and just uh, put the fear of God into him, you know? So he's currently flying kind of towards us. It looks like he's turning away to the... Uh, off to our three o'clock. Yeah, it looks like he's already turning. So I think we're doing our job here. Looks like we're about... 33 seconds to miss our range. So again, we're going to chase him down. I'm not 100% sure we're actually going to uh, get to him in time. Bear in mind, we do have a number of enemy defences around. But nonetheless, we're just going to chase him in. And either turn him back or engage him. Okay, we're struggling to keep him in on our radar here. Just switching to a uh, ball mode target. Basically, where our plane just fires out a cone of radar as soon as we can see in front of us, as we seem to be having problems with our uh, radar designator. And these guys are a real bitch to see out of distance, so I'm not too sure what I'm going to do here. Very much aware that I'm over the SAM missiles here. Looks like we've got a couple of MiG 29s off our off our nose at this point. You can just about see him. Wingman seems to be firing, which is good news. Okay, let's turn into them. You can just see them off our nose here. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. It's pretty difficult for them to see them. We're going to start turning into them here and get into a little bit of a chase. We've got a little bit of altitude. There we go, off our nose there. One away. Okay, so that is our uh, dead flight. Calling in to let us know we're on station. We'll call them once we're not in a dogfight anymore. Again, to be really wary of height here. Just keeping an eye out. Okay, that's a missile. Got a few surface to where satellites targeting us right now, but I'm not too concerned at this point. Let's gain some altitude, fire off some defenses. Whoa, okay, now it's all getting a little bit interesting. Okay, back up to altitude now. Should be out of range of those missiles. Uh, I don't think quite see what's going on there, guys, but there was a few missiles coming at us and my wingman, so a uh, little bit of evasive maneuvers there, but everything is fine. That's our wingman up there, I believe, maybe? I know wingman's behind. I don't know what's going on. We're going to turn back into the fight here. We just wanted to uh, turn around there, guys, and get away from enemy territory. But we're going to turn back in now, and we're going to go back for the fight. There we go. We've got one locked up on our uh, target designator. Going to call in our wingman to, uh, to come in and attack with me. Again, these guys are pretty far out here over Russian-controlled territory. So I'm not sure if we're going to get all the way up to them to attack here, but we're definitely going to kind of roll in on them and give them a little bit of a scare. See, we're about 50 minutes, seconds or so from missile launch, so they're quite a way out. Okay, so what we're actually going to do here is turn away... And uh, let the seed fight come in and do that. So the dead flight come in and do their job. Turn back over our territory and continue our patrol between waypoint two and waypoint three. We're gonna keep an eye on those MiG 29s, but it looks like they were headed away from us and away from our um, seed and dead flights. So I'm not overly concerned. Let's get our wingman back on us. 
can see we're quite a long way over Russian territory here. You can see on our threat warning radar a number of threats down on the floor. Okay, and this is why we're staying up at 20,000 feet. Really important, guys, if you're doing this mission and playing through. Keep your altitude up. You want to be no lower than 19,000 feet. Otherwise, you're just going to get slammed by the SAM sites, the surface to air missile sites down below. And just basically remember, don't get too distracted getting into dogfights. Uh, if the guys you're attacking are far enough away and flying away from your flight, just turn back and continue the patrol because you don't want to be caught sleeping in this one. It's really easy to fail this mission and it's a real pain in the ass if you do. So we are now uh, heading back to waypoint uh, three there. You can see we're about four nautical out. And we'll start to see all the chaos happening around us as the F-15s and F-16s come in to suppress and attack the air defense sites. I haven't quite perfected yet is the ability to look all the way behind me in the oculus whilst keeping my wings level with the joystick. It's a little bit of an odd movement because you have to kind of twist your whole body whilst holding the joystick steady which is a bit of a nightmare. I just love how this game looks. Honestly it's so tough for me to play anything else. I'm looking at getting some of the oculus touch controllers fairly soon but I mean I just want to play DCS, honestly, all the time. It's all I want to do. I love this game so much. On that note, guys, um, if any of you guys are playing this, I hope some of you are. I imagine some of you guys watching are playing DCS. Uh, give me a shout. I'm going to put my Discord, um, my Discord tag on screen for you guys around now, if I remember. Uh, add me on Discord, and please don't be too weird, but add me on Discord, and if you play DCS and want to jump onto a server and do some flights with me, I would love to do that. If you feel like you're at a lower level than me, don't worry, I'm happy to help you out, give you some tips and fly. And if you're at a higher level than me, please jump on and help me out. Okay, we've got another threat showing up on our radar here, we're just going to get him locked up. And again, just let him know that we are here and watching him. It's about 76 seconds out for us and probably a good 45-50 nautical miles, so he's not too much of a threat right now, but we're definitely going to keep him locked in our radar. And just again, let him know that we're here, we're watching him, and hopefully he will turn and burn. So what you can hear now is all our um, seed and dead flights radiating a number of things here. Uh, you do get a lot of kind of air traffic control chatter in this, but I quite like it, especially with um, the headphones on, like the helmet audio. It just kind of adds to the, uh, the ambiance, so I do quite enjoy it. Yeah, it looks like this guy might actually want a fight. Uh, yeah, we're going to pull away. Uh, I do get really nervous when we get this far out over enemy territory. A, because I feel like we're quite far away from the flights we're defending. And also, it's just it just strikes me as a bad thing to do, you know. So we're going to a nice tight turn back in, just head back to our patrol area. Let that guy do whatever he's doing. In the meantime, we just have to pray that our ground attack flights do their job and get that early warning radar so we can head back to base. Mission success. The enemy warning radar site was destroyed. 
Well done on the top cover. You may RTB or continue to engage targets of opportunity. Okay, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. We are done. Mission success. The early warning radar site is destroyed. And both me and my wingman lived to fly another day. It's a successful flight. Uh, if this doesn't happen to you first time, just fly it again a few times. Don't get frustrated. It will eventually work if you do your job. It's just sometimes the uh, the ground attack defense force, uh, so the ground attack forces sometimes get shot down, and that counts as a failure for you, even though you didn't actually do anything wrong. So uh, yeah, we are now going to return to base. Uh, let's get our wingman in with us here. And let's get him into a close formation here, just so, uh, you know, we can see him just off our wing here. Okay. So we're going to burn up what's rest of our fuel and just go full throttle to head back to base here. We're not too far out. Uh, as you can see, looks like we're about 50 nautical miles out. And honestly, in a fighter jet, 50 nautical miles is not particularly far. Colt 1, passing waypoint 8 at 13,000. That was odd. I just heard something that sounded hydraulic-y from a plane, guys. I don't know if you caught that. Everything looks okay. Still feels like we're configured fairly well. We seem to be losing speed a little bit, though, interestingly. It's a little bit concerning here, guys, but nonetheless... Whoa, 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 what's happened? Shit, that was our canopy. And the lights are come on. Guys, we are having some serious problems right here. I'm not sure what just happened. Like, if it's like an electrical issue or something, but we do not want to lose a canopy at 22,000 feet. Uh, I'm not even 100% sure what to do in this situation, guys. I think basically, let's throttle back and nose down. I don't want to be at altitude with no canopy. Certainly, if this was real life, I'd be calling Mayday, Mayday, Mayday right now. Alright, let's dive down. Try and keep our speed under control, because again, I don't feel like speed is going to be a good thing for us here. And let's try and find one of our emergency airfields here. Looks like we've got one maybe 37 nautical miles out. Because we need to get... Oh, no, there we go. There's a closer one there. We're just flicking through the ILSN. You can see on the bottom right the head up display now, guys. But we do not want to be in the air any longer than we need to with this situation going on. Alright. It looks like Sogenlung is our closest here, guys. Let's, uh... I'm trying to keep our speed down here. Pull the air brake. Just try and get down as low as possible, as soon as possible. I think you remember reading something, something somewhere that we should be really trying to stay around 250 knots and really around 2,500 feet. So I think that's what we're going to shoot for, guys. I'm not sure how much this game models this stuff, but honestly, I don't want to push it. You see our wingman just off our wing there? He must be wondering what the hell's going on. Uh, again, in real life, I'd have probably given him a heads up. He's probably watching me thinking, what the fuck is this clown doing? They're saying that. What the hell's he doing? He's going low. Keep an eye on what we're doing as well here, but I'm a little bit concerned about my wingman. What is he doing? Mate, this is not the time for showboating. Flight lead's got a little bit of an issue here. I'm a little bit worried regarding our landing gear and stuff. Our landing, if I'm honest, guys. 
I don't really want to test it yet. Let's try and just keep everything steady. Speed's under control now. It's like our wingman's coming in for a close pass. Maybe just kind of get eyes on what's going on with me. Check my configuration. Might want to pull up a little bit there, mate. What is this guy doing? Really could do with not having this level of distraction right now, guys. Right, it's going to get a little bit of throttle on here. Try and get our speed up a little bit. I don't want it to be too low. Okay, man, that's really Is that my gear going up and down? That's the real question right now. 22 nautical miles to the airport, wherever we're so going along, I'm guessing, is where we're landing. So let's keep an eye on that. Barely making it over this hill here, guys. So I'm not talking too much. I'm very much concentrating, trying to keep our speed down, our altitude down, but also try and keep her at least fairly safe here. The city looks absolutely beautiful below us. But the graphics in this game are just stunning. Like I, I wish we could have this level of quality in, in you know, X Plane Eleven, the new genre, the new generation, sorry, of flight sims coming through. Okay, it just looks absolutely gorgeous right now. Okay, I'm expecting to be able to see the uh, airport fairly soon. We're a little bit too low. I game more altitude would be quite beneficial, but with no canopy and with the plane acting like this I just want to keep it as low as possible really certainly pattern altitude ok so we've got landing clearance that's always good news Just gonna turn in now and get ourselves lined up here. A little bit off kilter. As I thought, we are having problems with our landing gear. Alright, we're going to abort this landing, guys, and go in for a go around here. Or at least loop around and bring it back in. At least I think we've got our landing gear down now, which is great news. Let's get the throttle up, get some more speed up. We're going to do a tight, tight turn here. Again, I hate to say it, this place does look absolutely beautiful, even though we're coming in for an emergency landing here. I 
Alright, I mean, even by Chris Fly's planes landings, this is a fairly exciting one. The plane's acting all hokey. Landing gear's not quite working properly. We seem to be having major issues across the board here. It's weird, just going to basically throw her onto the ground and cross our fingers at this point. Alright, glide path looks okay. Lineup's not ideal, but. Hope people can yaw that out. Looking good. Can we maybe a wee bit fast here? There we go, nose down. Alright, break, 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 break. Come on. 150 knots. It needs to go down a lot faster than this. Break, 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 come on. Why are we not losing more speed here, guys? Come on, 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 come on. I can see the end of the runway. We're not going to make this one, but 50 knots should be alright here. Little bit of a bump. And there we go. Well, guys, a crystallized plane is landing there. Canopy popped off at 22,000 feet. But we got it down. Mission success. All I can say, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. This was the first mission in Flaming Cliffs DLC for the F-15. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.